Hello, everyone, and welcome to Everything Iconic with me, Danny Pellegrino. Now, you all know that I've been loving this season of The Real Houses of Miami. I've loved it since its return and the original incarnation. So I'm so thrilled to be able to talk to Julia from The Real Houses of Miami. Julia, the reunion has wrapped. How are you doing today? Whew, I can take a big breath and uh, relax on my farm <laughs> and just go chill a little bit. Yeah. And how do you feel about the season overall? Do you, how did you feel coming out of it? Well, you know, unfortunately it's been a hard season because we've seen a family being uh, broken apart and, uh, you know, it's always very hard, especially when there are kids involved. But, um, you know, I think our show is about real friends and friendship you know, and friends dealing with real life situations. And in the end, we always come together. Yeah. There was a beautiful moment in the, I think it was maybe part two or three, where you were talking about Dr. Nicole being for you, being there for you in the hospital. And it just, I think, reiterated the relationships off screen that it seems like the cast of you all have together. And I don't know, it was a beautiful moment because sometimes on the other franchises, it might maybe seem like people are just thrown together and are only there for each other during filming. So I always like to see those little moments. I thought that was really nice. Yeah, not in our case. We are, we're always together, whether it's cameras on, cameras off, and we're so familiar with each other that we don't even notice sometimes that the camera is on because we're just living our life. We're just rolling no matter what. And Mm -hmm. that's why I love this group of girls. And how are you doing post screen? And I just was reading that uh, Martina is now cancer free, which is so beautiful. I want to say congratulations. How are the two of you doing? Thank you. I mean, we are relieved. It's a huge weight dropped our sh- from our shoulders, but you know, it's still a long road ahead of recovery, and it's a long process because even though she's cancer free, she needs to get back on her feet and get all her energy and strengths back and it's uh you know it takes time it takes months we don't know doctors always say for everyone is different so we're just taking a day at the time yeah someone very close to me is is dealing with the a cancer right now and it's hard to watch someone you love going through something that's so uncertain and uh i haven't really talked about it on the show but it's it's challenging and I think, of course, you're most concerned about the person who's going through and who is having the cancer themselves. But it's also hard, I think, for the people around them because you just want so badly for them to be healthy and well and all of that. So I'm just sending all my love, all my love uh, your way. I will tell Martina. My boyfriend also is like obsessed with her because he's a huge (laughs) tennis fan. Um, So he, he... he was like, she's the best. I think he was telling me she's, she's the best overall and she doesn't get enough credit for how good she is. And he's like <laughs> obsessed with her. Uh, there was a moment at the reunion though, getting back to the show where Alexia, um, Andy was asking about Alexia being a star and that comment she had made during the season about how she's a star. And I felt like you were giving an answer, but then, you know, there was so much going on at the reunion. I I thought maybe you got cut off. Did you feel that way? And what were your thoughts about that whole situation? Oh, yeah, I'm having, I'm relieving that moment as we speak. Well, you know, um, what I would have said if I would have spoken at that moment would be that, you know, I guess Alexia and I have a slightly different maybe interpretation of what being a star is. I mean, I live with a star. I go to bed every day with a star. I wake up <laughs> with a star. You know, I know what the star looks like. Uh, Martina Navratilova is the star and she doesn't even call herself a star. Like real stars don't need to call themselves a star. Right. Right. It's like that saying, uh, I know it's a little bit different, but money talks, wealth whispers or something like that. Do you know that phrase? I feel like it's sort of similar. (laughs) You don't need to say you are a star. Just like, as I said, we have a different um, interpretation of that. There was also this moment with Alexia that we saw in unseen footage where she had said, uh, she, uh, let me, I wrote it down here, something about the LGBTQ community. She said she's more LGBTQ than you. And what was your reaction to that? You know, what can one say to that? I was pretty shocked. Like, why do you have to compare? I mean, how can you even compare who is more, who is that? And I mean, I, if she feels like that, great. Maybe because of her husband's sexuality. I don't know. That's, that's her. I cannot speak for Alexia, but, um, 
me personally, I would have never, ever compared myself to another person saying, I am more than that. You are who you are and you represent what you represent. So I was very taken back and surprised by that comment. Uh, we see a lot play out with Lenny and Lisa. Did you know Lenny very well? I, obviously, you joined the show um, in season four, but did you get a chance to know him at all? And what are your thoughts about their relationship? I did a little bit, yes, because Lisa, um, you know, she always, she's a very generous host. She makes wonderful parties and uh, the lucky few get a possibility to really like go inside her house and she opens her home to her friends. So I got to hang out with Lenny and with her in a smaller settings. And I didn't catch any um, hints, you know, I didn't think to me, he seems to be in love with Lisa, things to me were normal. We spoke Russian together. So I had no idea, even though, of course, all these women around, but then uh, when you have a secure marriage, okay, women are there, but it doesn't mean your husband or wife are going to run away with them. Um, again, like Martina kissed Gwyneth Patro on the show. It doesn't mean she's going to run away with it. You know, so that's like, but I, unfortunately, that's what um, happened. And I hadn't, I was like totally not um, seeing that. You just mentioned uh, Gwyneth Paltrow, and I imagine the two of you uh, have so many famous names in your phone. Do you have like a, who's the most famous person in you or Martina's phone? Is that a silly <laughs> question? Or who's like a close friend that we might be surprised by? Name it and we probably will have them. <laughs> well, you know, I was, think, <laughs> I, I was thinking before this interview, I wonder, I love Rosie O'Donnell and I know Rosie lived in Miami for so many years and she's also a very prominent lesbian since the late nineties. And I was like, I wonder if they know, but I, I don't want to be, I know that might be a silly question to just assume I'm gay myself. So I know people always say, Oh, that person's gay. Do you know them? But I was like, I wonder if they know Rosie. Uh, I never met her, unfortunately, but I know Martina is in touch. Yes. Oh, interesting. Would, would love to meet her one day myself. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, back to the show. Where are you at with Larsa? You know, Larsa had an interesting reunion. She said some sort of crazy things. I loved when you stuck up for Dr. Nicole when Larsa was kind of saying she had a a, a better job, or I forget what the wording was, than uh, Dr. Nicole. But uh, where are you at with Larsa? Well, we, you know, throughout the season, um, I kind of rediscovered Larsa and we're playing this game in our friendship, like I called it Tom and Jerry. That's what it is. Uh, I don't necessarily always agree with Larsa. I don't know why she made this comment. I don't know why she needed to like uh, look down at Nicole's accomplishments. Uh, I mean, what? What's why? Why did she have to do it? I mean, um, I mean, I I sell eggs and mangoes. Larsa sells her feed. Nicole <laughs> is a doctor, right? So like, why? Why <laughs> diminishing somebody's achievement? Like why to do that? Um, it's not yeah. very good. Hmm. Friendship. Yeah, Are you know. two in a good place now? Life will tell. Um, it's kind of dot, dot, dot. We, I think we have um, a lot of things we need to discover or rediscover about each other. And uh, there are a lot of things I'm still digesting from last you know, season. And uh, life goes on. We'll, we will see. Um, mm -hmm. She reached out. She was also very supportive of, of Martina and um, I'm grateful to her and to all the other girls on the show. Yeah. But we will see. I don't know. It's literally a uh, game is on. You know, you and Adriana are very close on the show. And I was happy to see at the end of the part three of the reunion, it seemed like there was a little bit of a breakthrough with Adriana and the other women who she was so much at a standstill with. Uh, do you think that they're all going to be able to mend those fences going forward? Or or what do you think is going to happen with Adriana and the group? It's so hard to tell because Adriana, um, she knows she made some mistakes. She knows those comments were pronounced at the heat of the moment. And she apologized and apologized and she kept apologizing for that. Uh, those apologies were not expected, accepted by, by Alexia. That's her right. But Adriana, in my opinion, did everything she could to show and to apologize. What else 
can she do? I really, really hope that those women can uh, find the common ground because after all, they have such a history and it would be really sad if they don't work things out. Right. Yeah. I'm hopeful for a path going forward for all of you. I love the cast so much and I think it works so perfectly together, all of you. And so I, I don't know, I want you all to find the common ground. And and of course I know going forward, you'll all have sort of your little squabbles or whatever, but I don't know. There's, it's just such a great group. And even the, the friend ofs and the main cast members, I loved you had a moment with Kiki in the reunion that I thought was beautiful as she was walking off. You said, no, I want to apologize to you for something. I just thought that was I want to clear something with her because I didn't have the chance to kind of say it to her face. Right. Was there anything else that maybe didn't air or that you didn't get off your chest during the reunion? Pretty much, you know, only I, I didn't have a chance to answer about that star question Andy asked me. And that was probably my only regret that I, you know, let the other women uh, talk and didn't step in when he actually directly asked me a question. But maybe he'll hear it now. <laughs> so our interview, that's pretty much, that's pretty much it. I said what I had to say. Um, I made my point about Nicole. Uh, I had a moment with Kiki and, um, you know, my mind, I was, I was there, but, you know, I also was just in the beginning of Martina's treatment. We were in New York together. She was going through cancer treatment, to be honest, my, my heart, my mind were mostly with Martina and I was not concentrating too much on what I'm going to say when I was asked the questions or when I felt I need to step in for my friend, I did, but my mind, I was slightly absent because all I was thinking that Martina is doing her proton therapy. She's starting her treatment. What is going to happen? So I was really, I was really there, but not hundred percent there, which is hopefully people can understand. No, I completely understand. And I thought you did amazing. And I also think it would be so hard to get a word in edgewise with any of these groups on the real housewives because everyone of course comes to the reunion. They want to clear the air and it's a lot of big personalities. So I didn't feel like you got I lost at all. I have a big personality. Yeah, I yeah. don't want to clear the air. <laughs> I know. I loved it. Uh, what do you think the cast should look like next season? Is there any changes you would like to see made or what do you think? Are you spilling the beans? Do you think there will be next season? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, there will be. You know, I had I, I was just on a Zoom with Cooper, one of your producers yesterday, and I was like, we need, I need the season to come, you know, right away. We need the season. So hopefully. I'm myself, like I'm so upset that the show is already aired and I have nothing to look for every Thursday to watch on TV. So I'm going to be watching other shows. Well, it's coming I'm back though, Julia. Come on. Be another season. I'll be there. I mean, I hope I'll be there. <laughs> I love my Bravo family. So I am not stepping down. No, I heard a rumor, and I don't know if this is substantiated because it was just from a blog or something, but that you all are would be starting filming in the spring. So maybe April or something. So I know you can't comment on it. More than me. <laughs> <laughs> I know you can't comment on that, but uh, but so if you were in charge of casting, like, let's just say kind of throw a magic wand at you. If you were in charge of it, would you make any changes? Would you bring on someone new? Would you get rid of anyone? What would you do? I adore and enjoy all of the ladies. Like I wouldn't, I would be sad if anybody would leave. Um, if somebody would want to join us, I always embrace people with open arms and then they will show themselves what they're capable of and then the relationship starts so you know life is full of surprises um everybody has a chance at an opportunity at given time to express and show what they want so if there would be one day another show and another person why not i think it's cool seeing somebody leave in all honesty i would be sad to see somebody leave uh, you know, Marisol on uh, last season, she played this game, who do you trust the least? And so I just want to pose that question to you of the current cast members, who do you trust the least? This is a messy game. <laughs> no, it's a fairy game. Who do I trust the least? Um, oh, there is a music. <laughs> um, I think I trust Marisol the least. Interesting. And why? why do you think that? 
because uh, she always seems to know things about people, but then uh, it's kind of very hard to ask her, like get a direct answer from her why and who so she doesn't back up her answers and it creates kind of very bitter taste in a mouth if you want to say you know yeah. so that's why yeah. um, i like you know if you if you make an accusation back it up back it up in my face don't pass it to other people say it directly to me right. you know i don't like hearing things from other people and have vessels giving information straight to the point if you have an opponent Look at them in the eyes. Don't stab them in the back. Go to war. Go like front to front. Yeah, that's did how you, I do things. Did you not- know? Yeah, not behind the back. Did you know any of the other women uh, from the original uh, incarnation of the series? Like, did you do you know Leah or Joanna or Anna or any of those other people? No, never met them. It's only Adriana and I. We've been friends since like almost the day I moved to Miami. Um, and how did you two meet? Through a mutual girlfriend of ours, and we were at lunch at Fisher Island, and I've seen Adriana, and I just smiled. She put a smile on my face because she looked like I call her Blanche Neige. She speaks like Snow White. You know, she had those kind of, you know, perky lips, and she was like so cute. And then she, boom, she smiles, and she has this like beautiful white smile. And she was just funny and like so much humor and fantastic energy that she gives out. You all are so beautiful, though. The, I think Miami cast is just, you're all so stunning looking. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I was reading about, as I was researching for this interview, I was reading, and there's so much online about your past relationships and stuff. And I, I just sort of wondered if there was anything you wanted to clear up or, or that you felt like you've never really gotten a chance to clear up about about um, any past relationships or, or anything that's there's so much online written about all of you really, but yeah, I I wondered, is there anything that you, I know this is, I think you're one of your first podcast interviews ever. And so I just was like, Oh, I wonder if there was anything that maybe she thinks uh, she'd like to clear up. Like what, you know, but past relationships for me are kind of in the past with some people you separate on a good note with some less of a good (laughs) note and experience, but it's like a past you life is like a book you turn pages and um you learn from each experience bad good the ugly whatever but you learn yeah. i'm concentrating on today on my relationship today we've been with martina since 2008 my god that's oh my, my like longest relationship ever how did you um, two meet was it how did the two of you meet we met in paris for the first time in year 2000 in um club (laughs) and I looked around my shoulder and I saw Martina and I was like oh my god so according to her I gave her like one of those James Bond looks I had my drink in my head in my hands and I turned back and I was counting okay one two three four if I count to like 20 and she doesn't kind of knock on my shoulder she doesn't come to talk to me that's not the Julie I know (laughs) no probably counted till like 15 seconds and this soft voice on the back said hi I'm Martina that's it game is on that's how we met um we exchanged numbers we were in touch like for a couple of months but then life went different directions and uh eight years passed by just like that and we met again in Paris, literally the same time during French Open, I bump into her. I had my two daughters then. They were tiny. I had a food tray full of food in a player's restaurant of Roland Garros, and we bump into each other. And she was like, oh my God, you. Mm." She said, what's new? And I said, well, meet Victoria, my daughter, meet Emma. And then I added, would you like to have a coffee eight years later? She smiled. She said, yes. We had that coffee the next day. We had another one and then another one. And then guess what? She moved in with me. Wow. Just like that. And yeah. never moved out. <laughs> oh, I love that. I love that. Uh, I know uh, I, I got to wrap this up, but I just, um, I'm so excited to watch more of your story unfold. Hopefully next season. I love the show so much. And uh, the last two questions I sort of ask all of my guests are your favorite Mariah Carey song. 
And then also like, who do you think is the people magazine does the sexiest man alive thing, but who do you think is the sexiest? It could be man, woman, you know, whoever, who do you think if you were choosing for people magazines and you can't choose Martina, you have to choose somebody else who would be the sexiest person alive. Hmm. Well, I remember staring at that tennis player. He's not playing anymore. Uh, he's a Russian tennis player called Marat Safin. He was so hot, so hot. Even oh, I got to look him up. Oh, my God. He was like the hottest guy. <laughs> um, even Martina says that he's like, wow, um, he would be probably like my uh, hottest guy. <laughs> and um, favorite, Maria. Oh, my God. I don't know. Maybe I'll just go with a Christmas song. <laughs> a classic. Love it. Classic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what's next for you, Julia? What are, are you? Do you think you'll plan to adopt again, or is I know you said that sort of tabled? Is Is there anything next uh, that you want to share with us? I, you know, my hopes and plans for adoption are still. I'm still not losing hope. Right now, it's not my priority because how can it be? You know, we were waiting for a phone call to adopt a child and. We had to fight two cancers. Right now, it's about Martina getting better. Once she conquers this horrible illness and recover, we can then start hopefully making plans again about life. But today is, um, I don't want to lose hope, but I don't know if it's realistic. It's really 50-50. I don't know. Right. Kind of uh, one day. Julia, this was such a pleasure. Where can people find you on social media? Um, my Instagram. I I don't do much of a Twitter. I'm still kind of a new person in the social media, but um, I'm on Instagram daily. Julia Lemigova, just like that. All right, we're all gonna follow you. Arm. Yes, please follow me. <laughs> I people who love animals. I post like cute videos about all my baby goats and baby cows and all of that, and then just my daily life. Well, I just followed you this morning and I'm so excited because I do love seeing baby animals, especially everything's so crazy. It's like, I do want to just see you with animals on social media. So I'm excited. Julia, it was such a pleasure meeting you. Hopefully one of these days I'll get to meet you in person, but thank you so much for taking the time. And I look forward to your next season, which I'm manifesting. Oh, I'm manifesting that too. <laughs> thank you, Julia. Thank you. Such a pleasure.